Well today, we're looking at this Pioneer stack system. Belongs to a friend of mine, has a few faults, apparently it only plays on one channel and the record player plays at the wrong speed. So uh, let's have a look what we've got. We have a stereo cassette tape deck, graphic equaliser and an amplifier DC Z81. These, while they look like separates, they are just one unit. Then we do have a separate tuner, a FZ91L, followed by a uh, CD player, PDZ71, uh, PD and finally the turntable, PLZ81. So, let's turn it on, power's up, it's a good start. I have a speaker plugged into the right hand channel. We have nothing. So let me have a play about. Am I on tuner? I'm on tuner. So we have sound out of the right hand channel. Let's try the left hand. So left hand channel. Nothing. Uh, no, we have nothing out of the left hand channel. Balance. It's all good. Right, so. Okay, well, let's look at the turntable. Belt is even on, so let's put the belt on. Oh, and I can say right from the get go that is way too loose. So, right, first things first, it's going to need a belt. So, let me get one of them on order. Right, so we're back in the right hand channel. If I go tuner, so we've got white noise. I can't pick anything up, but that's no real surprise without an aerial. So, let's try. The other stuff, CD, open. Right. Alright, so that's good. Oops, wrong one. Oh, that one. Alright, so let's go tape and eject. It looks atrocious. So I think these are clean, but for now let's just see if it works. So it's good. Ooh, we've got a tape in this one. I'll try mine so I know at least what it's supposed to sound like. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see what Alan's listening to, shall we? Mm. 
Hmm, that's interesting. That's... Oh well, don't know. That seems okay. But anyway, right. So it all appears to work apart from the left hand channel, and obviously, we need a belt for that, which I have just ordered. So I suppose the only thing to do now is to take it apart and see why I've got nothing on the left hand channel so we'll do that now right, so here we are inside it and it's very dusty so I'll have to give that a bit of a clean but, uh, nothing obvious at the moment <laughs> check those fuses, the capacitors don't look particularly swollen or the casings receding or anything like that and we've got four fuses from what I can see through the dirt nothing looks particularly burnt out or damaged so I think the first thing we need to do is just give everything a good clean up so I can see what I'm doing better. All right, so now we can <coughs> oh dear, see a bit better. It's not perfect, but it will do. You can see the various different boards. Better look at the components. It's a little bit dirty down there, but <coughs> I couldn't get my brush in there. I'll get some. Um, aerosol, air spray stuff out of the car later. But, uh, I think the first thing we need to do is just double check the fuses, have a good look at the capacitors. <coughs> Failing that, it could well be the audio output. So, um, let's have a little fiddle around, and I'll come back to you. So, a quick check down there, and that fuse has blown, which is the one from from there. So little two and a half amp fuse so we will replace that and then see whether or not it's blown just because you know these things happen or whether something more untoward is going to happen so that's the next stage replace the fuse turn it on and see if it pops again So the moment of truth, let's keep an eye on that fuse down there, let's turn it on at the back, turn it on at the front, well it's not blown yet, so let's plug a source into it. Oh, I can use a tape deck. So let's plug the speaker back in and see if I've got channel on the left audio on the left hand side. So again, right, let's press play. I have got audio on the left hand side, though it's not brilliant. That's just the tape, so I'll that tape out. Mind what I've done with mine, there it is. Put that one in. 
no, we definitely got an issue there. That's more the tape than anything else. So let's Exactly what all that noise was. What it was was where I've blown all that dust out. I reckon it got on the head, which was where that crackling was coming from because it's disappeared now. So I will let it play through for an hour or so and make sure that doesn't pop again. And just keep a check of the temperature of some of the components inside. But for now, I think the left-hand audio issue is solved. So we're a little way on. Let's turn that down so I don't get content matching. We've got... Oh, no, it didn't. Bit of a dirty switch there, so I'll give that a bit of a clean-up. In fact, I'll give everything a bit of a clean-up. I mean, inside there is filthy. That one's obviously the same. Been in a garage for a long while he uses it in his workshop garage area where he does welding and car repairs so all needs a good clean up i'll give all the contacts a clean up i'll set up the tape deck the belts appear to be okay so i'm not going to deal with the belts in there uh, just the belts in the record player but um at the moment, I think we've solved it. I will just let it go, probably just another half hour. And it's purely on the left-hand channel, so if it's going to pop again, um, it will, hopefully. So uh, we might be okay. But uh, just so you can see, if you do have this again at the back there, FU6. Uh, is marked L for left hand channel and FU7 I think it is, I can't quite see, FU7 yep, is for the right hand channel. Um, obviously we have your audio output IC with a transistor either side. Um, and that was what I was hoping hadn't gone because Obviously it's going to be a lot more expensive to fix than a fuse and uh, much more of a pain in the backside. So at the moment it's looking good. So uh, I'll let it play for a bit longer and then I'll come back to you. So with my cobbled together thing of a headphone jack thing blah 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 into a computer we now look for how stable it is 
and definitely running fast um, that's running at about 0 0.4 peak 0 0.2 RMS, that's uh, very fast. So let's see what it's like on the other side. As you're going that way, we're pretty much bang on, not far off the speed, it should be about 3000 hertz, we're at 3099, 0 0.07 to 9 RMS 0 0.1, so going that direction, that's actually pretty good. Come on, give me about my 3000 hertz tone. So, yeah, that direction's not so good. That needs a bit of work. Let's try deck B. about to say on the whole deck B's alright but that's uh, that's a bit bizarre all right let's try reverse so that's I'm gonna say that is the pinch rollers, I reckon. The way that comes round, shoots up, and then goes back to normal. I'm going to say it's the pinch rollers are out of shape. Right, let's look into that. So inside the CD player, get a nicely laid out board. I'll give it a quick quick dust although it's not as bad as the other ones were but uh, this worked fine so it's just going to be a quick clean up with the laser so in here the laser is just hidden under there slightly so I really need both hands so I will come back to you in a second so onto the turntable so Let's lift that up, move that in, we are on the 33, and oh my god we're at 51 point, so right that really needs sorting out where it holds, back here, oh 60s, Thirty-three point five. Thirty-two point oh. We're very sensitive. This thirty-three point one. Oh, two. Thirty-three point three. So move on to forty-five. And we're up in the 50s again. So is that half we want? That one. Let's slow this one down. Yeah, 
Right, so on 33, we are on 33 and a third. If we want to sped up a little bit there, just knocked it as I took the screwdriver out. Put that one there. Ooh, far too much. There we go, 45. So we are basically spot on. Right. So let's do start. On the 45. We're measuring, we're measuring. We're still measuring around and around and round we go. Alright, so we are 45.03. This is pretty much as spot on as we're going to get. Minimum 44.95, a maximum 45.12. So that gives us. A 0.17% wow. I'll live with that. So, oops, one. Under 33, start. And around and round and round we go. Where we stop, nobody knows. Well, we do know we'll stop at about 33. God, I don't know if I talk some drivel, don't I? And there we go. So, 33.33. So we're running at minus 0.02%. That's pretty damn good. Minimum speed 33.26, maximum speed 33.40, a wow of 0.16%. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So that is all sorted. So that's the turntable sorted, the CD player sorted, the output sorted, all I've got to do now is just align the tape heads. So we will do that next. What I've got, I've got this going into my main amp because I've only got one monitor speaker and I can't be bothered to go and get another one. So what I'm doing, I'm running out the headphone jack into the auxiliary of that amp so I can get left and right channels together now oh pardon me out there so we'll put that on tape now on these ones uh, let me show you close up to get to these screws because annoyingly the doors don't come off what you've got is a little plate there that just unclips like so and there are the holes to get to the alignment screws and then you just clip that Oop, where are we And we just clip that back in when we're done. So what we'll do, 
put in test tape. Press play. And turn that down. Speed calibration times. Oops. Turn that down even more. 3,000 hertz. As you know the score by now, we're looking for maximum audio. See, it's gone very muffled. about maximum. Now let's turn it over. So we're about there on that one. Put the cover off. That's about right there, so we now want to go on to uh, the uh, we now want to go on. Oh, God. to the uh, 10,000 Hertz. So we'll come back in a second when we're up there. Right, so the next one we're at should be the 10,000 Hertz. And as you can hear, it's much higher pitched. So again, That's about right, the only one I'm not overly happy with is the reverse on this side. What I'm also doing is I'm just looking at the outputs on the graphic. 12,000 hertz. aiming for is you can hear obviously the difference in the tone but 
also where I can see from looking well actually at the level meters on my 8 track player more than anything because they're nice easy to read meters so I'm looking for maximum recovered audio but also the balance to be right between left and right hand channels and that is about spot on So there we go, that is the azimuth setup. It's a bit fiddly at times, sometimes it goes dead easy, other times like this one it is a bit more fiddly. Uh, and what I now need to do is just drop a little bit of lock on those just to stop them coming loose as the head swivels. This one's a better design in as much as, uh, again, let me let me show you. This one's not a bad design as much as, as you can see, let me get the pointer, the head actually spins on its own thing here. Whereas on, say, my Pioneer deck over there, the whole head spins, including these. So as these, as the head spins, it can loosen those screws off and it's those screws there and there that you adjust whereas this that isn't moving it's just the head moving inside so that's actually not a bad design but uh, but those are adjusted up those pinch rollers really could do with replacing but i don't have any um they're on order but uh, as everything if you order from good old AliExpress, they'll be here sometime in the next decade. But um, but yeah, so that is all all done for now. Now, some of you may have noticed I made a bit of a mistake when I was setting it up. I hadn't put the graphic in the neutral position, so uh, I was setting it up with one side a lot stronger than the other so I've now put the one in the neutral position gone back and redone it and it's now set up as it should be so uh, schoolboy error there but uh, easily rectified so this is now basically done let me just stop that so the uh, the unit here we have cleaned and set up the tape deck which um, it didn't need much it just basically just needed a clean um, as I said the pinch rollers could do of replacing but I don't have any so but it you know it, it's passable um, so that's been done aligned the heads etc etc um, sorted out the tape speed so that's all good Obviously the graphic I've not touched other than just clean the sliders. The amp uh, had the problem on the left hand channel. So I have replaced the fuse. Uh, it turned out there were a few dry joints as well. So I've gone through and done those. I didn't do them on camera because I forgot basically. But, <laughs> um, but you know how to solder a dry joint. So that's not an issue. Tuner, basically done nothing with, other than just give it a quick clean. CD, again, just a quick clean, clean the laser and check it's okay. And the turntable, as you've seen, replace the belt and uh, check the speed. So all that's left to do now is just uh, play some stuff through each of the units, let it play for a while, make sure everything's good and... Uh, it can go back to Alan. Job done. So, that was the Pioneer DC Z81 FZ91L PDZ71 and PLZ81 
from 1988. Um, keep watching for more content coming. I have some interesting stuff coming, as you can see from my pile down there. Ignore the pizza box. And I still need to do that Tefifon. So uh, keep watching for more to come. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da!